Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xing Hao, and I'm a first year PhD student from Duke University. It is my great honor to give a presentation on our project Kali, which aims at finding performance anomalies on RDMA subsystems. This work is in collaboration with Badance and my advisor, Dan Yang. Today, RDMA are getting rapidly adopted. There are a lot of systems that are built based on RDMA transport to reduce network overhead and achieve high, I mean, better performance. For example, high throughput, low latency, and high CPU efficiency. However, our experience shows that there exist some unexpected performance anomalies when using RDMA. For example, an application that has particular traffic pattern can cause the RDMA NIC to send a lot of PFC port frames, even when the network traffic is only 5 gigabit per second and there is no network congestion. PFC is a prevalent technique to ensure lossless for the Ethernet-based RDMA networks, and post frames are usually generated only when there is severe network congestion. And a large amount of these PFC post frames, such as this anomalous case, can cause catastrophic consequences, such as deadlocking the entire data center networks, as shown in the right figure. Another example shows the same application may suffer from drastic throughput drop after migrating from one host to another host equipped with the same type of RDMA NIC. And this kind of unexpected anomaly severely impairs the user's experience, especially make the performance unpredictable. So in all, these cases show that there can exist severe performance anomalies in the RDMA networks. And before we deploy and use RDMA in the production environment, we need to conduct comprehensive tests to make sure that we can use RDMA free of such anomaly. The good news to us is that vendors have done extensive tests. For example, there are several components and corresponding potential bottlenecks inside RDMA NIC. And the RDMA, RDMA NIC vendors have done a lot of tests when, I mean, before manufacturing them. And similarly, other hardware vendors also conduct extensive tests on their individual hardware components, such as CPU and GPU. But unfortunately, that's not enough. RDMA offloads a lot of complex logics into the hardware, and it, it also has complicated interactions with other hardware components. This makes individual hardware tests inadequate. For example, it is possible that an anomaly only occurs when there are multiple bottlenecks across different hardware components are triggered. Here, we use an example to show that. To send a request in RDMA networks, the application first rings the doorbell in, inside RDMA NIC. To process this request, our NIC needs some metadata, such as the well-known QPair context. If this metadata is not in the NIC cache, it will trigger a cache miss. And it, it then needs to issue extra PCI operations to fetch the metadata from the host DRAM. And this procedure involves several hardware components, such as the NIC, the PCI switch, and the DRAM, and even the GPU, GPU RAM. And this procedure involves these hardware components and their interactions. So the individual unit test can hardly cover that. Therefore, we need to test the entire RDMA subsystems, which includes the RDMA NIC and all these related hardware components, as shown in the figure. We call this all the RDMA subsystem. People today have two approaches to conduct such integration tests. The first one is to run simple benchmarks, such as perf test, to test the end-to-end -end RDMA performance in terms of throughput and latency. The second is to run a representative set of real applications. For example, if the cluster is aiming at supporting a distributed machine learning application, then we just run the application in, such, in a test cluster, say a great test cluster, to see whether this application can trigger any kind of anomaly. But these two approaches are insufficient, and we use a simple sketch to illustrate that. Here, we let a sketch be two-dimensional for brevity. The real workload space can be multidimensional and much more complex. Given such workload space, there may exist many anomalies inside the space. The workload of simple benchmarks, such as perf test, only cover very limited space. For example, it only repeatedly sends a fixed size of request, and it lacks the flexibility of the request pattern. So it is not able to cover those anomalies. For the second approach, say running the real applications before deployment, it is possible that they pass all the tests and are free of anomaly when we test them. As shown in the figure, there is no anomaly for the distributed machine learning application or the storage application. However, with the further development, for example, the developers modify the applications to implement some new features, and then the workload of, of the application may change. And for the worst situation, the new workload can trigger some anomaly. As shown in the figure, 
the modified application may trigger anomaly after tested and deployed in the production environment, which is very dangerous due to the catastrophic consequences. And the fundamental reasons why these drumming solutions are inadequate is that they only test with existing workloads and cannot uncover potential performance anomalies. Therefore, we want to build a tool that aims at conducting systematic search for application workloads that can trigger performance anomalies. This tool would be beneficial for three groups of people. It can help data center operators to ensure that their network infrastructure runs with high performance and reliability. It also benefits hardware vendors to help them figure out some hardware bugs or limitations on the different de deployment environments. In addition, it can help developers better understand how to write RDM applications, for example, how to avoid these anomalies. To build such a tool, we first need to answer how to define a performance anomaly. This is hard in general because hardware specification only contain little information of what the expected performance should be, especially given the variety of the application workloads. Therefore, we take the first step to focus on two types of concrete anomalies that can be precisely defined and of great importance in the real production environment. The first one is that there should be no PFC pause frames when the network is not congested. So for example, there should be no slow receiver. The second one is that the throughput should not be much lower than the RNAC specification, for example, 20% in terms of bits per second or message per second. Given the anomaly definition, we will have several challenges to address. The first one is that how can we test or represent those workloads that are out of existing application workloads region? The second challenge is that even we build the search space, it is inherently very large given the complexity of the RDMA subsystems and the variety of applications. So how can we test efficiently? For example, if we already tested some points in the search space, how can we know which direction or what next point we should pick to test in the following uh, process? This is challenging because we have no search signal to use. Fortunately, we have several observations that can help us address those challenges. The first one is that we can leverage the narrow waste of the RDMA applications. Though the RDMA applications are I mean, various and the RDMA subsystems are complicated, the narrow waste RDMA programming abstraction, for example, the verbs abstraction, is clearly defined and stable. All the application workloads are basically combinations of different verbs operations. And therefore, we analyze the verbs abstraction and extract several dimensions and factors to build the search space. For example, we describe the memory, the applications used, such as the GPU memory or the DRAM. And we also described what types of transport application use, such as the reliable connection or the un unreliable datagram, and also the request patterns the application send, et cetera. Given such, such space, we can test with various types of workloads to search for potential performance anomalies. And for the efficiency challenge, our observation is that the development of the hardware provide an opportunity. Modern RDMA NICs provide two types of counters. The performance counters, for example, the bits per second or packets per second, and the diagnostic counters, for example, the PCI back pressure or the NIC internal cache miss. And the, these diagnostic counters are always mapped to those unexpected events inside RDMA subsystems. And therefore, we argue that the lower the performance counter is or the higher the diagnostic counter is, the test case is more likely to trigger an anomaly. Given these counters as the search signal, we leverage optimization algorithms such as simulated kneeling to efficiently search. We use this two dimension scratch to briefly introduce the search process. The process is like, given a random point we already tested, we change the parameters of this point a little bit. Say we generate a new point and we test with the new point. We find though there is no performance anomaly, but the diagnostic counter value increases. So, the simulated annealing algorithm will then mutate the current test point to the new point as shown in the figure. And the simulated annealing algorithm keeps mutating the point towards the direction to increase the diagnostic counter or decrease the performance counter. And finally, it can find the performance anomaly in a more efficient way. This is based on our assumption that a point that can make the counters in extreme value region is more likely to trigger an anomaly. And our evaluation strongly supports this argument. 
In addition, since the performance anomaly usually happens to a region of workloads rather than a single point, therefore, if we only use simulated annealing to search, the algorithm may get stuck to a region and repeatedly pass with the points of the same anomalous region as shown in the figure. So to address this problem, we invent a minimal feature set algorithm. It works as following. When we find a new anomaly, we conduct a few tests on the anomaly point for each dimension. For example, we change the transportation type from unreliable datagram to reliable connection and test again. And by conducting a few tests, we can mark a region instead of a single point. We, can call, we, can, we call this each region a minimal feature set. After that, when next time the simulated needling algorithm picks a point belong to any existing minimal feature set regions, it will avoid redundant tests and search for those untested points as shown in the figure. In this way, we further improve the efficiency. And we implement Kali with following components. A workload generator uh, generates workload to test based on the simulated annealing algorithm, and the engine helps to set up workload traffic on real RDMA hosts, and the anomaly monitor detect anomaly and run the minimal feature set algorithms. In addition, Kali only needs two hosts to conduct such tests. And here we present our evaluation results. We first present the performance anomalies found by Kali, then we present how efficient Kali is. We test with eight RDMA subsystems in our test bed, including six types of different RDMA NICs from different generations and from two different RDMA NIC vendors. All of these subsystems are typical in the production environment. And this table shows all the anomalies and their corresponding minimal feature set Kali found. The three in orange are existing anomalies before we invent Kali. And we can see that Kali successfully find all three of them and 15 new. As we can see, some anomalies require very complex triggering conditions and can have severe symptoms like PFC post frame storms. And this kind of post frame storms can threaten the entire data center networks. And more details are described in the evaluation section and the appendix of our paper. And for the efficiency of Kali, we compare Kali with two baselines. One is random search, which randomly generates a point in our search space to test. And we run each approach for 10 hours, say six, 600 minutes, and we measure the time of each approach to uncover the an an anomalies. The x-axis shows the number of uncovered anomalies, and the y-axis shows the time consumed. For example, random approach can find five anomalies using about 200 minutes. We can see that the random search already uncovered several new anomalies. This is because we have designed a more comprehensive search space. And we can see that with hardware counters as search signal to leverage algorithms like Bayesian optimization or simulated annealing, the Kali here, the search speed can be further accelerated. It can find more anomalies with less given time. In all, we demonstrate that the hardware counters are very informative to use as search signal. Applying existing simple optimization algorithms can leverage these counters to accelerate search process. And we also would like to share some lessons and experience we learned and the potential future work. The first one is that a holistic performance tuning over entire RDMA subsystems is very crucial. There are a lot of low-level configurations, such as MTU, PCIe configurations, NUMA, and IOMMU settings. These configurations will have a huge impact on end-to-end -end performance. And our experience shows that for some particular configurations, like the MTU, there is no best value or optimal value to set for all scenarios. Besides, our anomalies shows that there are so many potential opaque resources inside RDMA subsystems. And this brings new challenges for RDMA virtualization or RDMA performance isolation. Lastly, an end-to-end -end flow control mechanism for RDMA is crucial. Otherwise, we have to rely on the PFC mechanism, which is pretty dangerous for many situations, much more than only network congestion scenario. And in all, in this project, we find that performance anomalies are severe for RDMA in data center networks. Integration tests are critical, but existing approaches are insufficient. We build Kali to systematically search for anomalies, and we find 15 new anomalies. Kali is open sourced, and we hope this project and the experience we learned are useful to the community. That's all, thank you. I'm happy to take any question.